I feel very honored to be here this morning. Uh, I want to thank International Association of Technology, Education, and Development for inviting me to this conference. Uh, I'm from Bangladesh, uh, one of the countries most vulnerable to climate change. Our country always affected by floods. Climate change has increased the flooding in recent years. It prevents students from attending classes, and people have to struggle for survive. We have decided not to let floods get in the way of education. We have developed the floating schools. It is classroom on boats, a school that goes to the student when the student cannot go to school. Today, I'm going to tell you about our resilient community and initiatives that allow people to access to education, information, grow flood resistant crops, and adapt to the extreme conditions. Bangladesh is located in South Asia. It has very high population density. 162 million people live here. More people live in Bangladesh than in all of Russia. Here, 50% of the population lives below the poverty line. In the country, 46% of the population live within 10 meters above the sea level, and 33% live within 5 meters above the sea level. Therefore, Bangladesh becomes one of the most flat prone regions in the world. Hundreds of rivers are flowing across the country, and large parts of Bangladesh is submerged during the monsoon season. One third of the country floods annually, but extreme floods cover up to two thirds. The country had floods twice in 2007, and 10 million people were affected. At that time, 332 schools were completely destroyed, and 4,893 schools were damaged. 1.5 million children, or 10% of the primary schools, were affected by that flooding in 2007. On average, every year, 750,000 of children are affected by the monsoon flooding. Each year, river irrigation claims more than 100 square kilometer of land, sometimes swallowing entire towns. For example, the Shirajgan's town in the uh, southwestern part of Bangladesh. Uh, it has gone under the river. And 100,000 people become homeless annually throughout the country. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, 16% of the land will be go under the sea water, resulting 20 million climate refugees by 2050. This is a picture from our project site in the northwestern Bangladesh. Uh, we have the highest population density in the world, around 948 people living per square kilometer. And millions of people living in the river basins, they lack regular facilities like uh, education, electricity, and telephone services because the development has been concentrated around the paved roads. Transport, transport is limited in the flat prone regions, and roads to school get flooded during the monsoon season. The flood prevents students from attending classes for a few months. This often results in school dropouts. About 3.3 million children are out of school in Bangladesh. Uh, only 51% of the school-going children uh, complete primary education, and many of them are functionally illiterate. The school opportunities are very limited to the extreme poor, children with disability, and for those living in the hard-to-reach areas, particularly in the flat run areas. I was grown up in a flat run community named Shidulai. It's a village. And I saw many of my friends and relatives were denied access to education uh, during the monsoon season. It was very difficult for me to accept the situation. Um, at the time, I was very privileged. Uh, our family owned a small boat that ensured my travel to the school during the monsoon season. Later, I studied architecture in the capital city, Dhaka. And I considered dedicating my life for building schools and hospitals. But then I realized they would be underwater soon. I was hopeless. But then I thought of boats. I thought if the children cannot come to the school because of flooding and poor communication system, then why don't we send the school to the students by boat? I didn't find anyone to invest on my idea on floating communities or floating schools. 
uh, I started working as a social entrepreneur and founded the nonprofit organization Shidulai Shonibar Shasta. The word Shidulai is the name of a village uh, in a northwestern district in Bangladesh, and the term Shonibar Shasta means self reliant organization. I started the organization in the year 1998 with 500 US dollars. Uh, th that was my uh, own scholarship money and savings and with uh, old computer. I had no experience uh, with uh, writing grant proposals, but um, I researched on the internet and wrote emails and uh, submitted proposals to uh, more than 100 organizations that I thought could help us. It took, took me four years to generate funds to build the first floating school, and the first floating school was launched in the year 2002. A year later, we received the first grant for the floating school. It was from the Global Fund for the Children in the US, and it was a 5,000 US dollar grant. Uh, later in 2005, we received one million award from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that allowed us to build more new boats, solar system, computer, and a central library and training facility. This picture of a floating school, um, it is one of our uh, innovative ideas. It is a combination of a school bus and a schoolhouse. It collects students from different diversity areas and uh, docking at the end destination, it arranges on board class. After the class, the boat drops students at their places and then move forward in another direction to arrange another class and drops the students at their villages. This is the way a floating school works throughout the day and arrange three classes. Each floating school consists of a classroom for 30, 30 students, an internet link laptop or computer, hundreds of books and electronic resources. School provides basic primary education up to grade four. Uh, we have 1,600 students are studying on our 20 school boards. Uh, we provide education six days a week throughout the year. This is a picture from our two-tier um, board. It's a multi-purpose board, and we have on board a school and library training spaces and solar lamp recharging facilities on this board. There is a um, space in the lower deck which is used as a classroom in the morning, and then in the afternoon it is used as a library. Uh, we have a multi-purpose space located in the upper deck, which is used for provide training to the parents in the evening. We introduced the first river-based environment, environment, environmental curriculum in the country that teaches how to protect the biodiversity and conserve water. We have created these contents in cooperation with local community, university, and research institute. This locally developed content um, includes tutorial, training materials, presentations, and school books that supports education in technology, literacy, and the benefits of biodiversity and water quality and climate adaptation. Our boards use uh, solar energy to run computers. Uh, solar power also enables school to provide late evening classes to the working children. So when school is done, many students take home the Richard Sewer Hurricane Solar Lantern. It is a low cost solar lantern made from the recycled parts of the um, much used and traditional uh, kerosene hurricane lantern. This lantern is designed by us to provide additional hours of light in the night for children to study and my um, mother to stitch kathas. The students having good exam results, they only receive the Sewer Hurricane Solar Lantern as scholarships. The lanterns are recharged on the charging station on the floating school uh, or at their houses by a 10 watt peak solar panel. This is a picture of a floating uh, library. These are the bigger boats. Um, floating library has uh, all the facilities of a standing library, but it keeps moving to different riverside areas to cater the educational information need of the community. It has books, computer with internet access, printer, and mobile phones. People learn computer skills, then receive emails, and get information on sustainable farming, biodiversity, exam results, job opportunities, carbon process and services. Now the isolated waterside communities can easily communicate with the outside world using the internet. We have created a unique space on water that facilitates discussions among the community members on local issues. We have 
10 library boards reaching uh, over 19,000 users in the platform areas. This is a picture from our floating training center. Um, the parents of the floating school students and villagers, they receive um, training on the floating training center. It is equipped, these boards are equipped with internationally linked laptop, uh, multimedia equipment and educational presentations. The center teaches farmers sustainable, effective and ecologically friendly farming techniques, including uh, a new type of farming technique we have developed, we call it solar water farming, three different types of farming done on water and flood resistant rice and sugarcane varieties. We provide two different types of training. Uh, during the day, the boats arrange onboard training programs for the farmers. Laptop connected to the internet via cellular network provide connection between the users and experts. The trained farmers are growing flood resistant crops. They're using mechanical means of controlling insects that has reduced the pesticide uses and saved beneficial insects. At the night, um, we arrange evening um, shows. Uh, it is arranged on the large sailcloth using multimedia projector and sound system. So that people can see from their own courtyards. People sit or stand at the riverbanks and they watch the evening um, shows on the big sailcloth. Uh, our boats utilize web tutorials, presentations, and documentaries on climate change, resilient livelihoods, children and women's rights, and gender equality. About 300 people attend each evening show at the riverbank. Training boat encourages farmers to utilize the river water for irrigation. As a result, the dependency on groundwater sources is reduced. And people are concerned about endangered species and working together to preserve the biodiversity. We are working with uh, mostly the landless families, landless farmers, and children from landless families. We have created land access for these landless farmers and provided them with agricultural inputs so that they can grow flood resistant sugarcane varieties. These, the, on the picture, you can see uh, the uh, flood resistant sugarcane variety. Uh, this variety can stay under water for a few months. Uh, these varieties have um, the high sucrose content and helpful to the people during the floods when the pure drinking water is not available. 50% of the Bangladesh population is landless. There is always growing demand on lands because population is increasing fast. About over 8,370 kilometers of waterways and 1.3 million of ponds are in the country and most of them are not utilized. We decided to use these as resources to develop solar water farming to reduce the dependency on land and create economic opportunities for the landless picture landless people. This is um, the solar water farming. Here no land is required and less time is needed as fish, vegetable and dark duck farming are done in three different ways on water. The solar system helps to maintain egg production. Its floating garden ensures availability of vegetables during the monsoon season. The project creates employments, develop assets and improve the quality of life and nutritional status. It helps people to get out of extreme poverty and adapt with the climate change in induced flooding. About 70% of rural families in Bangladesh do not have access to grid electricity. They, they rely on traditional creation lantern for um, lighting. We teach rural women on sure hurricane solar lantern manufacturing, marketing, and use. They work on the floating solar workshops. Uh, and the Shura Haken provides high quality light in the evening for children to study and, and the women to teach katha or quilt to generate income. It has created new business in the rural communities. It ensures safe travel during the flooding period. The project's running costs are partly covered from organizational income, including the crops and fisheries. Um, we have our own income generating activities within the organization supporting the development projects. And at the same time, we are also exploring a new business model by charging fees for the new solar lanterns, Shura Hurricane Solar Lantern. We, we are charging fees in the community where people have the ability to pay. The, this income is directed towards uh, the project's operational costs, including children's education, healthcare, and training program. 
there is a strong potential for scaling up the business model and generate more revenue for the floating classrooms because the potential market for our solar lantern is 70% of the rural population. Now, girls and women take full advantage of education and information facilities delivered right to their doorsteps. The proximity of their facilities allays the concerns of the parents and guardians through our work. 90,000 families of riverside villages are benefiting from improved education, increased income, solar powered lighting, and communication with the outside world. We developed, expanded, and sustain the solar power floating schools over 10 years. It was possible because of the community involvement, their support, our innovative approaches, and capacity building of the local community. We have integrated the technology with the traditional component of our community to provide the basic services. For example, the conversion of the traditional boats into classrooms, and the conversion of traditional creation land into solar lantern. Here, traditional knowledge, labor, and materials are used to develop the user and culture friendly designs. Also, our boats are specially designed by us to adjust to any equipment configuration as well as to protect the electronic equipment from inclement weather, even during the height of monsoon. Our boats provide maximum flexibility and can reach villagers that for logistical, social, or cultural reasons could not access the permanent institution. We have ensured uh, the community participation in the project design and implementation. Communities are also involved in deciding uh, board stations and schedules. In case of introducing a new design, we develop a prototype first and then field test it, and also it is tested in, di in different settings to see the robustness. Our project, the floating school, is very easy to start. Build a boat, equip it with books and computers, power it with solar energy, and bring it to the communities through waterways. Our work can be replicated not only in any riverside community, but there are aspects of it. For example, solar lamps, solar system, locally developed content, and the farming techniques that are applicable anywhere. Our floating education model has been replicated by the local organizations in different parts of the Bangladesh. For example, UNICEF, BRAC, CARE, Bangladesh. Our work uh, was featured in the Hungry Minds, a documentary film about three mobile libraries in the world, as well as the documentary film titled Easy Like Water, supported by the Sundance Documentary Institute. Also, it was featured in the Future Shorts documentary of PBS News Channel in US. And here is the documentary. In Bangladesh, scientists say that within the next um, 10 to 20 years, 20% 20 of the land will go under sea water. It, it already started happening in the south. Islands are getting smaller. And in the north, the rivers are getting bigger. We're getting more erosion and more floods. That's why Bangladesh is, uh, you can say that it's the ground zero for the climate change. Every year, uh, schools are flooded for uh, three to four months. It happens during the monsoon season. We are now in northwest Bangladesh, and the school, uh, you can see over there, it is now under the flood of water. If the water level increases uh, within the next few days, the students who, have, who are still uh, in this class, they will not be able to come to the school. There are many uh, school dropouts in Bangladesh and it is because of uh, 
uh, regular flooding. During the flood last year, uh, there are 330 schools were completely destroyed and more than 4,000 schools were damaged. This is the reason I decided why don't we bring the school to the student. In, in the northwest Bangladesh, uh, there is not enough paved roads to serve these communities, so people have to depend on river and boats. Our school, boat school, is a combination of a school bus and schoolhouse at the same time, because uh, it collects students from different riverside areas and finally dock, docking at a. Uh, at a destination, it arranged on board classes. This is our uh, grade one board school. And uh, they are reading off a book on biodiversity. This is uh, one of the uh, books being uh, developed by our organization. And uh, this is uh, completely focused on the river and uh, riverside pollution, biodiversity conservation. So what we can do actually to control the pollution, like uh, keeping the latrines away from the water source, use of uh, river water for irrigation, identifying beneficial insects. Well, we have uh, right now 42 boats in operation and another 46 is under uh, we are designing it, but within this year we will have around 100 boats in, in operation. We have placed solar panel on the, on the top and we have a structure to hold the panels. And from the panel uh, it comes to the, uh, uh, here we have all the equipment in this box, the battery chargers, uh, the uh, charge controller and inverters, and uh, there is a, this is the battery batteries uh, store uh, the solar energy. In the board school we have uh, 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 a computer or laptop and um, hundreds of books. And the, with the computers they are getting everyday information. Uh, the, they are getting access to internet and they are getting newspapers of the internet. So they are keeping updated with the, what is happening within the country and also outside of the country. In Bangladesh, uh, the pressure on land is always high. At this moment, we have 1,209 people per square kilometer. And if the country, 20% of the country goes under water, which may happen within the next 10 to 20 years, where will the, these people will go? Because we don't have enough space, enough land, so people have to live on water in some way. Climate change is a global problem. Not only Bangladesh, the other countries should work through together to address the climate change. Uh, we have to find solutions. For example, our uh, solution to address the climate change, the both floating education system or floating housing project, which can be adapted in other settings, which can be done in a big scale that many communities around the world can be benefited. Thank you. Uh, our approach in using boats, solar energy, and uh, floating farming to adapt and cope with climate change and improve the quality of life will serve as an inspiration to you. Our work shows great potential for scaling up and replication with regard to the millions of children out of school in Bangladesh and other countries, also the millions of people uh, affected by the climate change in many, um, uh, many countries in the world. Therefore, we need to work together to create access to school and basic services in the disaster-prone areas. 
and improve the quality of teaching and learning. Thank you. Thank you all.